Achoo! Happy springtime, fellow allergy sufferers. Or should I say happy annual runny nose, headache, congestion, and itchy eye season. I'm just feeling really tired. I think maybe my allergies are acting up. I've already vomited like five times today. It's just unfair. Why do some of us have allergic reactions, but not others? What sets allergic reactions off? And is there anything we can do to stop them? It's definitely getting worse. Okay. <laughs> Is your tongue swelling up? Either that or my mouth is getting smaller. I asked my friends at the Cleveland Clinic to tell me more so we can all learn the truth about allergies, the seasonal kind, and more. I'm Tori, and this is the TMI Show. <music> allergies, what are they? Simply put, they're your body's reaction to any substance it views as a harmful invader. But sometimes your body's immune system thinks a normally harmless substance, like pollen, is actually an attacker. This sets off a chain of events we know as the dreaded allergic reaction. I don't know what to tell you, Brenda. I'm rashy. Rashy. Bazillions of people have allergies. If you're one of them, the first time you're exposed to an allergen like ragweed, your body responds by producing antibodies. The job of these antibodies is to track down the allergens and chuck them out of your system. Really? You told on me. That's lame. All right, go. Where? Get out. Now. In the process, your body releases a chemical called histamine, and that's when the trouble starts. Seasonal allergies are among the most common types. They're called seasonal because they show up around certain times of the year. Kind of like exes around Valentine's Day. Just let's just talk about this, okay? You know, wrap it out. No, we can't wrap it out. We're not together anymore. It's not the same. This means we can't talk about things. Seasonal allergic rhinitis, also called hay fever, is caused when a snoot full of pollen sets off that chain reaction, leaving you sneezing, stuffy, itchy-eyed, and runny-nosed. <laughs> Seasonal allergic rhinitis can be frustrating, especially if you're sensitive to more than one type of pollen, like ragweed or various trees and grasses. In that case, your allergies may flare up as certain plants pollinate according to their own particular cycles. A vicious, never-ending cycle. Yeah. Over-the-counter nasal steroids and OTC and prescription antihistamines are available to treat hay fever. Your doctor might also recommend immunotherapy. Doctors speak for allergy shots if they're really bad. And I hate to say it, but it never hurts to avoid pollen in the first place by staying indoors or keeping your windows closed. <laughs> The thought of staying inside all day is probably causing some of the many allergy sufferers among us to get kind of itchy. That's because in the great indoors is where dust mites, another common allergen, rule. Dust mites are tiny microorganisms that live in, well, dust, plus carpets, pillows, and upholstered furniture. That comfy, cozy couch? It's full of them. Gross, right? They can cause symptoms similar to hay fever in those who are afflicted. What's the matter? Just hay fever. People with dust mite allergies are highly skilled with the vacuum cleaner. Oh, look at her. So happy. <laughs> if only there were a smaller one to clean this one. <laughs> and if frequent dusting and cleaning doesn't help, try those airtight plastic covers over your furniture. Just think of your furniture as a limited series collector edition, because seriously, they work. There are also medications that control your allergy symptoms. And we can't forget about pet allergies, but don't go blaming your sneezing and itching on little Fluffy's fur. Pet allergies are actually caused by microscopic flakes of skin, called dander, that are shed along with their fur. Dander carries proteins secreted by sweat glands and saliva. That's really the stuff that causes the itching, sneezing, sniffling symptoms. <laughs> You're allergic to dogs, aren't you? Nope. I just need an EpiPen because my happiness is making my throat close up. Hand me the small dog, Santiago. If your beloved little Fluffy is making your nose go all stuffy, try to keep them out of your bedroom at the very least. And maybe invest in an air purifier with a HEPA filter that can capture the most minute particles in the air before they make their way into your airways. Mold is yet another common allergy trigger. Mold spores float in the air like pollen and are commonly found in damp indoor spaces like basements, bathrooms, 
and outside in big old piles of leaves. Mold reaches its peak during hot, humid weather. You can also be allergic to foods, insect bites, and latex, even exercise. I mean, I can relate. And in very, very, very rare cases, water. Moira. Uh, Moira. Oh no, I just finally cried myself to sleep. The bed's soaking wet. There's a, there's a leak in the ceiling. There's a brown, disgusting Ow! drip coming. Allergies are no fun, and even less fun is avoiding the stuff that triggers them, like fresh air and puppies. Thankfully, there are ways to manage your symptoms. Sprays like topical nasal steroids, over-the-counter antihistamines, and decongestants can help, and so can prescription medications from a doctor. If you think you have an allergy, don't just grab an OTC and call it a day. Visit your doctor and get their professional take first. Want to know more about allergic reactions? Check out the info below and like and subscribe so you don't miss an episode of the TMI show. Thanks for watching.